Hey guys, what's up? Today at MixerShot, I'm gonna show you the new HDR merge extension that allow us to create HDR images directly into Luminar Neo. Let's dig into it. Luminar Neo version 1.2.0 introduces HDR merge extension. This one can be installed clicking on this button in the top left corner of the software. And here we will be presented with HDR merge, click install. And from here, from these coming soon icons, we can imagine that soon we can get some additional extension and a function that can increase uh, the, the capability of uh, Luminar Neo. Once the installation is completed, we're gonna get this module on this side, on the right side of the screen. And here is uh, as easy as selecting the photo that we want to merge together, drag into it and change eventually the settings and then click merge. On the settings panel, I recommend to keep auto alignment always on and ghost reduction only if you have moving uh, objects uh, between the different frames that you shot. I assume that you know what's an HDR, but what it is and why do we need them? Often when shooting landscape photography, we are faced with scenes uh, where we have an extreme contrast between dark and bright uh, parts of the image. For example, in this photo of the uh, Antilope Canyon, we can see that uh, here we can see outside the, the clouds, but nothing inside because it's pitch dark in there. And then I did other shots uh, where I was increasing the exposure time. And here we can see perfectly inside, but we don't see any more the sky outside. So there's too much uh, like contrast between the dark and the bright part of the image. An HDR, uh, photo is a photo that is made combining multiple exposures where we have different level of, um, uh, of exposure of light and this can be comp combined together into one photo. I will show you that the final version in a, in a second. Uh, I want to show you quickly another example. Uh, here I only used two photos, not five like uh, uh, with the Antelope Canyon. Here we have outside a uh, perfect exposure of the sea and the sky but inside the photo is pretty uh, underexposed. And in this one, we cannot see much outside, but inside this tower, uh, the, the exposure is now perfect. So we can combine these two photos to get then a perfect exposed uh, final version. But HDR is not something new after all for Skyloom. Uh, the first software that they did, Aurora HDR, was actually a software to create this kind of images. Uh, this was before Luminar was launched. Uh, around seven years ago. Uh, it was the first software that I started to use from Skyloom. I loved it and I used it for many years. And I was a bit uh, like sad that uh, Luminar uh, even like integrating a lot of super cool new features that use artificial intelligence never integrated HDR uh, function. And they kept this function separated. Uh, so you still needed Aurora. And today with HDR merge extension, this is uh, changing so we can install this extension to bring the HDR function into uh, Luminar Neo. Let's now have a look at some example. I prepared three for you. So let's start with these two photos that I captured from a, an ancient tower on the coast of Sardinia. So we can see the overexposed version and the underexposed one. Now to do the HDR, we just select the two, the two. So to create the HDR, we just select the two photos and drag them on the HDR merge uh, module. Here I selected auto alignment. There's nothing that is moving between the two frames, so I don't need to do any anti uh, any the ghosting. And then I can just click the button merge. And here it is the merged photos. You already can see. Let me enlarge this a bit more. Uh, that the final image contains a bit uh, of information from both photos. So this one is the dark one. This is the bright, and this is the final. HDR image that has been combined together and I will zoom here to show you that uh, the um, merging of the two images has been done very very good so there's no misalignment between uh, the two photos and this usually can be seen uh, in the areas between uh, dark and bright uh, like um, points for example between this wall and the sky and the transition is is actually perfect so now we could proceed editing this photo in Luminar as usual. And we're gonna do it in a second. Uh, the only thing I wanted to show you here, there's a small bug on how the exposure uh, variation between the two photos is calculated. 
in this case it should show uh, two stops so like uh, minus one and plus one uh, because um, if you look at the settings uh, on the exif here on top the first photo was done at iso 100 and 15 seconds and this one is a 230 seconds that's a difference of two stops um, this is not affecting uh, the merging process so the, the the extension works perfectly it's just like um, a visual uh, mistake here uh, on this on this uh, interface so let's go to the edit panel and start editing this photo so to edit this photo i will go for a uh, uh, quick Accent AI intervention. Accent AI uses AI to uh, process automatically the photo and we see that it's doing a very good job here. We can maybe even push a bit the sky and answer not too much to avoid uh, an unnatural look. And what I see now is the tonality of the rocks inside is a bit uh, too cold, almost uh, towards the green color. For that, we will go to develop section actually let me find 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 i'm looking for the for the white balance that has been moved here in luminar neo and here i uh, will uh, as the the white balance includes temperature and tint and in here i see some green i will move the tint towards magenta to remove the green uh, presence from the image here we are let's see how much difference uh, this is doing before and after now it's a bit maybe too magenta and i will add a bit of temperature to make the image overall a bit warmer but not too much and at this point i will push also a bit the vibrance to get a bit richer colors uh, regarding the exposure i think we have pretty much a very good one i will just reduce a bit the highlights to get a bit uh, lower uh, light outside and maybe a little bit the shadow inside but no I'm pretty much happy with that and in this photo um, I'm pretty much happy with it I will just go for a final super contrast step and in super contrast I will like creatively play with the uh, contrast in the highlights midtones and shadows and see if the changes is uh, more uh, appealing than the non. So basically I will just move this back and forth and see where I like it more. I will do the same for the mid-tone and for the shadows. And this is kind of the final touch that I'm doing in this case with the super uh, contrast. I still see a bit of green color from the white balance. I will try to fix that a bit better and here we are let's have a look now at the two original images and see how much the final one got improved so this is the underexposed one the overexposed and this is the final quite a big impact i would say let's move now to this other example that i prepared for you from the antelope canyon in arizona so let's look at these five photos here the first one is very underexposed we can see the sky and the clouds and then uh, as I increased more the shutter speed between these shots, I got more and more light until I could see perfectly the rock formation inside, but we cannot see anymore the sky. So this is another perfect example for HDR. I will drag these five photos here and I make sure that auto alignment is selected and I will click on merge. After one minute and a half or so of processing, here we get the final HDR image. In this case, having five uh, photos took a bit longer than the previous example, but here we are. This is the final image, and what we can see is that in the same photo, uh, the rock formation are perfectly exposed, and at the same time also uh, we, we can see the clouds in the sky outside. Uh, but the clouds are still a bit overexposed, but we can fix that because the informations uh, of those uh, clouds are in the photo now. So we go to the edit menu, we start a bit with accent AI and see what we can get here. Uh, the photo overall is still uh, too, too bright. Here the sky an answer is not available because it's not able to recognize that this is the sky. But we can do that in develop module. 
and working with the highlights we can recover a bit the information on the sky we can try to do something better going uh, to blacks and whites and reduce a bit more the whites uh, in this case I'm pretty happy uh, with this uh, correction let's look at before and after uh, maybe you think that the orange color is a bit too strong I also feel is the case uh, but to do that I will go in the HSL panel and just remove reduce a bit the orange uh, saturation to make it a bit more natural and here we are to bring the attention a bit more uh, to the center I will use a bit of vignette effect bring this a bit uh, on the negative side that's to show you what is the effect here and here we are to bring the attention to the center and to complete we can do a bit of super contrast and see if this will do any better and we can actually recover with the highlight contrast a bit more information on the sky but I like to keep the fact that the sky is, is brighter that's a bit closer to the scene that I also remember there it's pretty crazy and amazing place very dark inside and in this case I was actually waiting for these clouds to show up in my photo so to make clear that that's uh, the sky uh, playing with the contrast added a bit too much color I will go back to HSL and reduce again a bit the orange saturation and here we are let's go and compare this final photo with the other frames and as you can see here we cannot see the sky and then in the final version we can see both the information in the rocks and outside you will see that when I am in the catalog the color look a bit different than in the edit mode uh, so it looks like uh, there's um, a bug uh, on the on Luminar Neo uh, that by the way is a very new version so I expect uh, these little bugs uh, there's some bug here that the, the, the version of the preview is not recalculated uh, properly after the editing but this is uh, the, the final image that we edited together so let's go to the uh, next example here we are in Iceland I captured this photo during my last photo tour uh, in Iceland last uh, February uh, winter uh, season to be able to capture uh, uh, photos in the ice caves inside the glacier on the Jokul Salon uh, glacier if I said it properly I'm showing you right away the final photo because it's really beautiful and uh, I wanted to show you this quickly before we select the photo put them in HDR merge and we can go for uh, the HDR creation as well uh, with auto alignment selected in this case uh, the uh, exposure variation between the shot is correctly reported minus 3 0 and 3 um, I have the suspect this is working in this case better because the, these three shots were done uh, with the bracketing function on a Sony a7 IV so that the information is written also on the EXIF while in the previous uh, photos uh, it was not done uh, like that, it was done manually. But still, that's a bug that needs to be uh, fixed. So let's click Merge and see what uh, HDR final photo we get out of these three exposures. And here it is, the final merged uh, HDR. We can quickly compare it with the originals and see the variation in the exposure. Again, it's pretty significant. But let's move to the Edit panel and start uh, enhancing this photo. Let's see what the Enhance AI can do a bit for the contrast. I will then go to develop to recover a bit a bit the highlights. Increase a bit the shadows. In this case I think I will try to push a bit the contrast with a curve and push vibrance to bring out those nice colors of the eyes. We have to fix a bit the color balance to avoid uh, there's a bit of greenish in, in there. So we add a bit of magenta and maybe we bring a bit down the temperature. 
uh, to make the scene more cold. So let's see how much this is impacting the photo. This is what we are getting so far. And in this case, I will use the structure AI to increase a bit uh, this cool structure and texture in the in the eyes itself. And also we get a nice texture out from uh, this uh, mountain that is just outside the cave. Let's zoom in to see the details and see also how everything that we did so far is impacting the image. To make this photo better, I will probably spend some time with the race tool trying to remove these people. Uh, for this example, I won't do it. I quickly want to show you uh, how to process this uh, HDR photo. We're gonna finish it with super contrast and especially the mid-tones here becoming very nice and this I keep to zero so this was Iowa, our final uh, touch quickly I want to show you that this final image doesn't look as good as this one where I spent a bit more uh, time uh, finalizing the editing and and I also erased out the the people that you saw in in the photo so with these quick examples I wanted to to show you that HDR can be a very useful function especially in this very contrasty uh, landscape scenery and I'm very happy to see this uh, this extension coming into Luminar Neo and very curious to see what are going to be the next function coming in this uh, extension library what do you think is going to be the next one leave a comment and see you to the next one